Hey YouTube, my name is Rob and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do facial recognition in Python. We're gonna be using an open source library called DeepFace. Now DeepFace is built on top of a lot of other models as you'll see, and we'll learn how to do things like facial recognition, age detection, emotion detection, and a few other things. This sort of technology is really interesting and it's a really cutting edge area of computer vision, but at the same time, we need to realize that it does have its limitations. And we'll definitely see that in this demo. We'll also talk a little bit about the potential biases of these models and when they should and should not be used. So as I said, we're gonna be using the Python package DeepFace. Here's the GitHub repo for it. And you can see in their description, they say, DeepFace is a lightweight face recognition and facial attribute analysis framework for Python. It's a hybrid facial recognition framework wrapping state-of-the-art models like VGG Face, Google FaceNet, OpenFace, Facebook DeepFace, DeepID, ArcFace, DLib, and SFace. So what you want to keep in mind here is that this package is actually using a bunch of other pre-trained models that are out there. But the nice thing about using DeepFace is that it wraps all these models in a similar API so we don't have to learn them individually and we can just swap them out in the background while running the same code. Now installation I found was really easy. You just need to pip install this. So I'm gonna go over to my terminal here and pip install DeepFace. And I already have it installed on machine, so it might take a little bit longer for you if you're installing it. So we're gonna go through a bunch of the different functionality that DeepFace has for us. Face detection, verification, similarity, and some of the analysis of facial attributes. So importing DeepFace is pretty easy. We just import from DeepFace, we import this DeepFace object. And I've already imported matplotlib for plotting and CV2, which is helpful for loading in images if we need to interact with them in that way. I'm also loading this lab black extension, which I find very handy for auto formatting. So let's start out with face detection. But before we get into that, I wanna just show you how I formatted some of the files on my machine. So in the directory we're working in, I made this folder called FaceDB. And you can see in this folder, there are two subfolders, one named Rob and one named Brad. If I go into Rob and let's just open this, you could see here I've put a bunch of different photos of myself that I just pulled off of searching myself on Google. And under Brad, I pulled up none other than Brad Pitt. We have a bunch of different pictures of him. Of course, we're so similar, the model's probably gonna get confused. No, but this format is actually how they suggest to format any sort of database that you want to do facial recognition on. And you can see here in the documents, they have a very similar setup here. So I'm gonna import this list of backends. These are all the different backends that DeepFace has for us to be able to use. And when we're using each of these functionalities, we can provide it a different backend. And if the backend does have that functionality, it'll be able to run. But pretty much everything we're gonna be running is using this deep face object. So in order to identify faces, all we have to do is run deepface.detectFace. And you can see here, it's looking for image path, and then it also has a target size so for our image pass, let's just give it this face DB and give it one of these pictures of me. We'll keep the target size the same, but we're actually gonna try some different backends. Let's start with OpenCV. And this should give us out the face that it's detected. You can see this is a NumPy array of shape 224 by 224 because that was our target size. And if we just show this image, we can see we've detected my face in one of these pictures. If I choose a different picture, you can see it's detected my face and it's cropped it around the area of the face. So let's go ahead and do this for all the different backends we have and plot and see how the results work. So for each backend, let's loop through it and then we'll run this face detection with our detector backend being the different backends. And let's make a subplot to plot this in. 
And every time we loop through the different detector, let's add this to one of our plots. And we're gonna have to enumerate over these backends so that we have um, them each appearing in a different location. We can already see that one of these libraries does not have the face detector backend. So we'll just wrap this with a try, except we're also gonna make the title equal the backend that we're using. Now the progress bar does show every time it detects for certain detectors. There we go. So we have detected the face in OpenCV, SSD, Dlib could not detect the face, MTCNN, Retina face, and Media Pipe. They each look uh, sort of different in the way they detect. And we could do the same thing maybe on one of the Brad Pitt faces just to see how it performs on one of those. There we go. So it's a little bit clearer of a face that it could detect so uh, and a lot prettier of a face. So that's our first step is just finding the faces and you can see there are a bunch of different approaches for doing that. But they essentially do the same thing, which is uh, crop out within the image, the location where the face exists. Next thing we wanna do is actually do some face verification. And the way we do that is running beatface.verify. And you can see with .verify, it actually takes in two image paths and then will give us a result about verifying if these two images are similar and how similar they are. And these are the models that we can use to do the verification. So let's go ahead and start with just this face net model. And we're gonna provide it two of the images of faces. Let's start with two of my faces. Now you can see here, this is the first time I'm running the verification with this model and it actually needs to download the model weights before it can run so this progress bar is the first time that you'll see this the only time you'll see this is the first time you run it facenet is saying that these two images actually are not me but we know they are me and we can actually plot them so just plotting these two images they, they are both of me i'm wearing glasses in one but not in the other maybe if i compare it to this one it's still showing that it's not me. So let's try a different, um, let's try a different back end. You can see here in the output, what it's saying is verified is false. And then it's giving us the distance metric that the model is using to say how different the two faces are from each other. And the similarity metric we're using is cosine. So it's actually saying that these two faces are not of me even though I know they definitely are. Let's run a similar verification on some of the Brad Pitt images. And I'm just gonna display the results a little bit prettier this time. So let's make another subplot. We're gonna show this first image on the left side and let's show this second image on the right side. And let's go ahead and make the title of this. This is just gonna print the result of this verified. And let's also do the distance. And we'll just round that to four decimal points. We're gonna need this to be double quotes. There we go. So we can see here that it's verified. This is true with the distance of 0.294. And let's also sh show the back end. And let's run this on a few of the different back ends to one of the different models that DeepFace has available. So VGG Face does say these two images are the same. Here we have FaceNet. We're downloading the larger FaceNet model, which also verifies it's the same. Open Face. This looks like it's a larger VGG Face model. Deep ID shows the distance is very close. And finally, the S face model. So all of the models did verify that these were two pictures of Brad Pitt, but let's put it to the test here again by running it on two images of me. Now, the thing is in this image, one of them I do have glasses on and another one I don't, but looks like they're all failing so far. So there we go. They all actually failed in identifying my face with myself. Now let's rerun it on two images of me where I'm both not wearing glasses and now it seems to be doing better. So I think th 
So this does sort of show you some of the limitations of this model, but even little things like glasses would cause these models to not perform well. So use these models with a little bit of skepticism in mind. But what if we have an image of someone and we wanna find out who it might be in a database of images? That's where we can use this deep face find. And what find actually takes is the first image is just the image of a person and the second is the database path. Let's run this on our face database for a picture of Brad Pitt and let's provide it this DB path as this face DB. And we're gonna use the default VGG face so what this face recognition is actually doing is creating embeddings from each of the images in our database and then comparing the embeddings of this face against the images in that database. And then you can see that each of the images is actually given its VGG face cosine distance. So it looks like these are all the images in the database where it's found the face to be the same. Let's try this against myself my images so let's take this and the result here does show that it's matched my face with a bunch of other images in this folder all right so we've shown how deep face can recognize faces verify the distance between two faces and then also look up a face in a large database of faces the other thing it has is facial attribute analysis. Facial attributes analysis provides a bunch of different information about the image and detects things like age, gender, and emotion of the person in the image. And the way we do this is using deepface.analyze and then we can provide it an image path or an image object and the actions that we want it to predict for. Then of course the detector back end we're just gonna use the default here. Let's use Brad's picture and look at what the result looks like. So you can see here it's running each of these different models separately and there's a progress bar to show what, how long it took to get each of the results. And then we have a resulting dictionary with the different features that it's tried to identify. Let's import pandas and make this a pandas data frame. And then if we want to plot this as a bar plot, we can see that the model detected the emotion in this image to be happy. So what I did here is I actually just took a bunch of different pictures of myself making different facial expressions. We're going to see how well it does in identifying those. But before that, let's also look at some of the other results from this identification. So it does show us the dominant emotion. It identifies the face. It identifies the age gender, and then it takes a guess at the race. So I'm going to go ahead and let's make a function that will read in each of these images. So let's use glob to find all the images in this folder. This will just give us a list of all these images. And then we're gonna run this analyze on a bunch of these different images. So what this code does is it loops through each of the images, it reads in those images files, and it runs this analyze, and then it makes a data frame with the emotion from the results of the emotion detection. And then I made a function here that just will plot that bar plot to the right side of our image so we can compare and see if it did a good job. So this is kind of a straight face. I was going for neutral here, but it actually looks like it says sad. It does think I'm happy here. Fear and surprise, it's going for surprise sad surprise got that one and then sad again so it does uh it does do an okay job at least at, on my face at detecting these emotions but again take it with a grain of salt it's not perfect and you can try the different back ends which might give you varying results now last thing i want to do is show you their streaming api which will actually show a lot of these results from the detection on a live feed. So we're gonna take a deep face and run stream on it. And you can see that it takes a database path and it also takes the source. And now we can see a window has popped up here and it's gonna take a picture every so often. And with that picture, it's showing the emotion to the side it's showing my detected age and gender there. 
So that's pretty cool. It doesn't actually run exactly in real time, but it takes a picture every so often and then displays those results. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial of the DeepFace library. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.